We're still at the Shea Z. Archard facilities. It's another day. It's Tuesday the 27th, and we're sitting up in a break room with Don Green, whom we hadn't seen since uh, early in this uh, show way back. And we're going to be looking at some old pictures. What do we see on the screen right mo this morning, Don? Oh, my goodness, Bob. We went through so many of them. What we're looking at now, which is completely gone, and Capco uh, salvage yards is in there, is, is we're looking north toward our storage with the old Shazy Marble Lime Company in the foreground. Uh, 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 the Lime Company, uh, you know, at one time had uh, mineral rights under all of this property, and I'm not just sure how the acquisition uh, from them and the Delaware and Hudson took place. Well, we're looking at the old Shazy Marble Lime Company, just immediately ahead of that or to the north, uh, is a section of orchards that they uh, eventually bought. You can see the lime dust covering it and they right. made it uh, impossible for us to sell those apples. Another interesting thing you might look at off to the right of the main plant, you'll see a little road going down through the apple trees and then look way beyond and you'll see it trailing way up there. We may not be seeing that much on the picture. May not be okay. seeing that, okay, but that road there, if you come back toward us, goes right up to Route 9 and that, you tell me, used to be the old corner at Route 9 where it takes a sharp left coming north, it used to go right straight ahead at that corner and come down right through the orchard and on north and turned into uh, the Stetson Road. Oh, yes, From yes, Route 9 yep. down to the Stetson Road, cut right through there. Mm -hmm. Uh, off to the left, uh, the little line you see is the railroad track that really came right down and out beside the south end of Shazy Orchard's cold storage. And we had a spur wide off of there, and back when I was a kid, uh, the, most of the apples went out by railroad car, and we were backing railroad cars into the siding there. Mm -hmm. uh, the back of this picture said, uh, subject, Shazy Orchard series, dated July 8, 1959, yeah. photographer Bernard Roth, uh, Clinton County, New York, this picture shows the fertility of the Shazy Orchard soils, a vast marble lime quarry and processing plant is in full production in the midst of the total 1,700 acres of the orchard. You notice the back of that SCD, Soil Conservation Department, uh, it's probably uh, was taken in con conjunction with one of their projects. Okay. Now this lime, uh, they've been closed up how long, Doug? Oh boy, uh, you, you've got me there at least probably 20 years now. Did it's you? been down, it, it kept downsizing, then it stayed there for stone production. Uh -huh. And uh, when was the Northway put through? 64, uh, 63. 64. They provided all of the stone and uh, the limestone, the, uh, what do you want to call it, not gravel, but crushed stone, mm -hmm. crushed stone, provided all of that uh, for the Northway. Uh, they weren't in lime production even at that time. Eventually, uh, this was bought up by Domtar uh, in uh, Canada, and now they've consolidated, and they've got about all the stone products uh, business, uh, Plattsburgh quarries, Saranac Lake quarries, uh, over west of here in Malone in that area. And they moved out of there, and right where all that facility is is where uh, Capco is now, the uh, salvage yard and used car business. Yep. That's just south of the orchard on the same side as the orchard yep. buildings. Did you acquire any land? Actually, they didn't have much. The only place they had was where the plant was. The rest was mineral rights under somewhere else. Yeah, that's right. And uh, those ran out. And uh, you can see all little pieces of orchard around it. Mm -hmm. The one where it, it comes out in the picture, we see the dust to the north. Uh, they bought it from us. And then we since have bought all of that back. <laughs> From, uh, from Jerry Blow when he's running Capco. Actually, we traded some land with him. That land, once it did not have the lime dust going over it, we traded that back because it was plantable for uh, a strip of land down uh, on Sheldon Lane, just uh, uh, north, uh, south of uh, Route 9. Yeah. Right. When I think of Shazy Lime, I think of Maynard Brown because he yep. was there for oh, yeah. many, many years. Oh, yeah. And you know, when I got out of the service and I started college, they offered me a job, and I think I could, something like $50 a week, and I thought that was big money. It was. And, but I'd probably still be making $50 a week or 100 or I would have no job then when they closed. 
But my no, wife... No, you'd have moved on. They've expanded, Big Bob. <coughs> you'd have moved on. You might not be in Jersey. True. No, well, you know that my Champlain. my girlfriend then, my, my wife now, Teresa, you, she was uh, way against it. You know, I said, I'm not, a, it's not easy with no money to go to school. And yeah. We never could go anywhere, but no, no, she, she, it will, it'll come sooner or later. Yeah. So it's still coming, I think. Yeah. It, it'll come one of these days. Yeah. Yeah. Just like the, the saying about the air base, you know, the last chapter has not been written yet. Right. right. Okay. Uh, Yeah, we'll look at another picture. Okay, we've it's been frozen on the screen, and uh, this is a little different scene, more familiar to most people. We don't know how much Calvin has here. Have you got the bottom of this, Calvin? Also, okay. Go ahead, Don. Tell us where this well, was taken. Well, okay, from. we're just looking from the opposite end of the other picture. Uh -huh. That other picture was looking down towards Shazy Orchard's cold storage, and. Uh, now we're looking back at the quarry and you can see in the distance in the right straight to the back you can see the buildings and the cloud of dust over right. it which was from the kilns where they were making uh, 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 li agricultural limestone and bagging it very dusty operation right here now in the lower foreground uh, on the left is uh, is our uh, uh, maintenance center it was a garage and ice cream parlor at the time, and uh, this is back a ways, Bob, because it showed the uh, building on the left. Uh, what's it say back there? Not July 68th, 59. 59, you see, the part that's closed in on uh, our maintenance facility was an open screen porch for an ice cream business, which uh, uh, Shazy Orchards ran or leased out and was run at the time. Across the road from it is the present Orchard View Cafe, which is in operation. Uh, then immediately forward as you go toward the quarry from that is our cold storage. Route 9 going up, circling around to the right. Mm -hmm. And way on the far left, if it's in the picture, is the quarry from which they, uh, I don't know whether that's in or not, uh, uh, way on the left. Yep, it's yeah, in the picture, yeah, right? Melvin nodded, that. yes. So yeah. that's the quarry. They took the stone out of there, moved it up to the dusty area in the background, crushed it, made limestone. Made, uh, yeah, made lime. Yeah. And you can see the lake in the background? Yep, Nylamont over there, and I, that's all orchard from Route 9 right straight to the lake, except the lakeshore property had been sold off. Uh, well, now I'm told that the little cafe over here, yeah. you have an office in there that you're, you spend quite a bit of time there. Is that any truth to that? Well, you know, it's one of Bob Vinn's stories, you know. <laughs> it seems so every time you're looking for me, I'm you're, there. You're there, yeah. That's right. But you've got to realize I'm old and retired, and so <laughs> it's a good place to visit and have a cup of coffee. Well, it's a place to rest on the way home. Well, I have to stop halfway home, right? <laughs> That's about yeah, where it is. kind of rest a little bit. Okay, now these apples are still, what is this? Is this a water, a pool? For your employees <laughs> that you have well, to, just short of the big building on storage on the left yeah there. just in the foreground uh that that reservoir uh that is a reservoir contained water that we circulated between our building and that reservoir and the tower in the middle of that reservoir uh, the water was pumped up there and filtered down it was cooling it actually the water in there was used to absorb the heat from our refrigeration equipment. The refrigeration equipment absorbs the heat out of the apples into ammonia. You have to cool that ammonia down to liquefy it again and, and uh, that water was circulated over pipes in what they call uh, shell and tube condensers, absorbed the heat, went back to that reservoir, sprinkled out in the air, cooled it, and pumped back around. It was a continuous cycle. Do you still use that as such? Uh, we use it, but not to cool the ammonia anymore. We use it to cool the water jackets. Uh, okay. The process of refrigeration uh, removes heat from the product. The heat, you've got to get rid of that some way. Okay. We'll take a short break. Be right back. Th thanks for watching. Put this picture in here to show you the overall orchard looking east toward Isle of and the background is Isle of This road that cuts across the middle looks like a path. What road is that, Don? Uh, that's uh, called the Minkler Road at this point. That goes up, crosses uh, uh, 191 that goes down to Shazy Landing, continues north, 
over to the North Farm Road, the run that runs east and west between like Castine's Farm and the fire station. Okay. Uh, and that's just an expanse in Bob. I'm not so sure if we aren't even south of Isle of there now. This is on the southernmost end of the orchard, and I'm not sure uh, across the lake. It looks like a, uh, a little, a little uh, causeway there and some more water in the background, but maybe those are farms. But that very well, that angle might easily be south of Isle of but it's right straight across the lake anyway. Uh, in the foreground is the area uh, where the Catholic Cemetery is down there. And, way down uh, and back, yes. Way down, way over to the right. Way over to the right. Way over to the right, yes. Uh, way over to the right, it's out of the picture. So we're looking, that's probably is Isle of Mont right there at this point. I kind of lose my sense of direction on that one. But now there's a square in the middle, of the foreground here. Yeah. It looks like the trees are gone. You, you remember? Well, that was always an empty square in there. It was all what we call a rough little piece and never had trees in it uh, since I came here. Uh, we, we cleaned it up and uh, we're in the process of cleaning it up and replanting that. And uh, the boys nicknamed it at the time the Anderson Ponderosa because there was about uh, 40 acres there of uh, one big plowing job and everything and, uh, and uh, the boys just nicknamed the darn thing and that's one of the first areas we cleaned up and replanted. Now this road that goes from right, if you take this road, you see there's two barns on it. Yeah. If you go way to the end of that, you come to your water tower. Come to our water on the, tower. On yes. the lake road. Come to the water right. tower and on the lake road. And between the right hand edge of this picture and the water tower is where your camp is. And the labor camp. The labor camp is you, there. You showed earlier. Yeah, the labor camp sounds terrible when you say Doesn't labor it camp. Doesn't it though? It sounds like something in northern Russia. Actually, that isn't what we call it. We have two... Uh, uh, temporary residences down there. One of them, uh, Bob, is the Palmer Camp. And the newer one, the bigger one that you were in that wasn't occupied this year is called the Lakeshore Camp. But back in the early days, uh, it was just a plain labor camp, but we call it the Palmer Camp, and that's where the workers stay temporarily but when it's they're picking apples. It certainly, is, uh, I think the, the word camp doesn't do it justice because they, they look like they're pretty comfortable in there. If you well, like to be with people. Hey, most camps are today, aren't they? The camps, when we were kids, they were really camps, you know. They weren't finished on the inside. Yeah. and Lean some to. of them had, oh, They were lean-tos, <laughs> yeah. Today, the camps are uh, our homes. You know, many say, of the camps are homes. Don't say we, Mr. Green. Uh, we, you know, you're, you're much older than I am, so we have to be careful when we include me in your conversation. On yes, that. Mr. Vent. All right. Yeah. Now, we're going to be going back out to see... And we may be in one of those places where the buildings are. You'll, that be, you'll be right along that road in the middle there somewhere. Right. Uh, right in that area. They're picking now, and we will we will catch up in the tail end of the film you took the yeah. other day, showing the loading and the transport will, of the apple. Yeah, we should see that because it's, it, we can understand it's, it's something else. Here's a quick picture. Um, again, just showing you the proximity to the lake and... Uh, what a great location here. You, you, this is tourist country. No one ever told you you should have uh, tourists here rather than apples? No one's ever told you that, Don? What, what you're, you're talking to me now. You know, I'm watching <laughs> that light there, and I don't know where it's on. Yeah. What road is it? This is the Lakeshore Road. This is the Lakeshore Road right in the foreground. Yep. The orchard is in the background. All right. This is showing probably way down as far as Baker's. Uh, home, uh, Lauren Baker, you know, and uh, their family. Right in the foreground here. Right near in the foreground, yeah. and uh, that's long before, and that's the houses there, and I... Yes, now if we make the curve yeah. and follow the water, yeah. then you see a road going up the center of the picture, that's the Minkler Road. That's the one we just showed yeah. before. And uh, you can see the camps, pictures right in that... Right in the bend of the road, the road right. shows right in around that bay, and then you go around that bay and you come to uh, Ryan's and Coolidge's and... Uh, and the, all the homes right. that are up along there. If, if the cabin has on the picture way in the background, the water you see way in the background is probably Kings Bay. Yes, sir. That's it Kings goes Bay. up into the showing up way up into the mouth of the Shazy River, way yep. up into the left part. Yep. There. And then uh, Point of Fair way in the background. Yep. Just an interesting picture taken. Uh, we don't know when.
you've got it all. Are we we waiting here? Yeah, yeah we'll get out. Now we got into personnel. The one we did on fertilizing and spraying, we've got the overall pictures. You want to get yeah, into some yeah, of that? Yeah, just just get right into this first one here. Well, there might be. All right, we'll. What are we doing? I, um, okay, we the picture we have on here now. Uh, what is this? Powdered milk. Yeah, it could be, you know, my dad stored, when I first came back here to work in 57, my dad stored uh, uh, powdered milk in the summer for uh, Bob Dooley. Is that right? Oh, oh yeah, I he had a big powdered <laughs> milk operation. This might be interesting to some people. If you're looking down the uh, left side of the picture, this is the left over here right. as it's been yep. taken. Yes. There's some people that, that maybe around here will know... Uh, uh, Right in the middle of the first three men there is Alphonse Gagne. Uh, Mr. Gagne lived in one of the houses on that Minkler Road we show. He had five boys, and you're going to kill me for names, but the, all of the Gagne boys, Leo uh, up in Morrisonville, uh, ooh, I don't know which one it is, runs the Morrisonville uh, septic service and a service station and so forth, uh, Arrell, uh Several of the Gagne boys, I, I can't think of their names right now. They were all from Shazy? They were all from Shazy. Yeah. I didn't know that. And if you come up with their names, uh, uh, it'll be good. Uh, in, the, in the background, uh, the guy looking away somewhere is Joe. What? Somebody's bound to call you in. I'll think of it before we get done. Yeah. In the foreground is Floyd Parrott. He'd be the third one from the left. Yep, third one from the left in the foreground. Over on the right, it might be interesting, the young fella uh, further, closest to the camera on the right is Bill Niles. The one on his right is Albert DeSalle. Albert DeSalle has passed away. We used to spread fertilizer that way, and it's just the next picture we'll show you, and it'll be something. A couple of men stayed on the wagon, filled the pails, the guys came up, put the pails and straps around their shoulders, and then spread it out in the way that the next picture will show. I'd like to have you note these very expensive small spreaders that they're using. These are special cans made for Shazy Orchard. Uh, yeah, they use the buckets, name yeah. SO Oil. Now, uh, you realize that we still had those today. They're worth about $7 each. Well, they wouldn't let us use them today because they probably couldn't clean them good enough to throw <laughs> the stuff back on the ground. Uh, uh, all right. right. <laughs> Just you want to, no, yeah, just we'll just get it. and this is what they do with it. If you're, this is a picture of the some of the employees. That's spreading. same guys you just saw around the wagon spreading it. You know. Yep. Okay, they they go up and down what uh, forty just walk feet up apart. The rows and, and the orders and are to put it. a can or a can and a half under each tree. Oh, you put you don't spread it. If, of course oh, no, not. Just around just, each uh, tree. Around each tree. Today we use a we use a commercial spreader behind a tractor, and they spread the whole area, the whole strip between the trees, mm -hmm. but not uh, where the trees are, but not between the trees. Now, what time of the year is this done in the fall? It's done early spring. Early we did spring. In early spring. You, you notice the grass is still and there's not, no yep. buds, nothing yep. on the trees. That was the idea. Okay. This one might be interesting, and this gentleman is still around. The fellow standing right in the okay. middle. Let's get this first before Galvin. To and uh, that's Charlie Brunell. Just a minute, we'll have to identify him. Okay, this is a long view of the same truck when there's the fertilizer there. Yeah, they're kind of doing the same thing, and the guy in the middle on the back of the truck facing this way. Right behind that bag? Right behind, behind the, the bag, the yeah. one right in the middle. Uh, With the cigarette? cigarette in his mouth. Yeah, you can see a cigarette in his mouth. That's all right outside, you know. Okay. And uh, that's Charlie, Charlie? Brunell. Charlie right. is in his 80s. Charlie Jr. Uh, works as uh, in the meat department down at Sun Foods, and Charlie is still working. I don't know if it's full or at least part time. I see him around Drew's Poultry a lot. Uh, he's a, a tough bugger. They had an I article in the, in the uh, Plattsburgh paper a yeah. year, year and a half ago yeah. about about him and all the work he does there and his yeah. age. You know, now, uh -huh. are, these tires are, are those regular tires or are those uh, solid rubber? Uh, well, you got me. They. Uh, the front ones look like they're regular truck tires, but yeah. like 750 20s, but the back one do look a little thin. I it, can't it, tell it you. They look like wagon. They got wooden spokes. Yeah. Let me get another shot. Okay. I was zoomed in. All right, beg your pardon. Underneath the 
you see the two sets of tires, uh, the back one has wooden spokes like you might have on a real old, old truck or whatever. It's being pulled by a, uh, a tractor with, with uh, crawlers, I guess, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we used all caterpillars uh, back in those days because it was so darn muddy you couldn't get around with anything else. Did these people work here all oh, yeah. year? Oh, yeah, they're year-round employees. Year-round employees. Oh, yeah, certainly. Oh, right. And this is probably back in the 40s, the 50s. That's one time my dad prided himself in. Yep. Uh, couple sprayers. Again, there's Charlie Brunell, the same one on yeah. that sprayer there. <clears throat> now, this is after the same time. That's right at the same time. Uh, they're uh, applying a ground spray. Uh, if that picture there shows the ground spray going out on the ground. All right. Uh, don't do that much anymore. That was for apple scab to try to uh, kill the spores on the, in the leaves on the ground. Okay, here's a close-up of the of the unit that they that they were pulling. And again, that's Charlie filling it. Give you an idea of, uh, and he was in that on that crawler tractor. Then that the uh, nozzles could be diverted, and uh, same thing we do today, except we pull from different tractors. We even use the same speed sprayers. And uh, those are adjusted for later sprays. Okay, now this is a little later in the year because there's buds on the tree. Yes, right. right. So that's when we spray the leaves. And then it was so muddy then that the uh, that's a filling operation. That water tank you referred okay. to uh, down at the lake. Yes. Uh, those trucks that you see in the picture mm. drew the water up to the field. The sprayer came out of the field. You can see the ground. It's just a muddy, slippery mess there. The sprayer had to come out. We filled it, put the spray material in. Truck went back for water. While they're getting water, the sprayer is putting it out. Okay, you know, you know either one of those two people in that that's, picture? That's Charlie again, up in the front of it. And the on back, the right? On the right, yeah. Uh, uh, he looks like he's uh -huh. adjusting the nozzle, you know, to uh, turn up the speed to mix the spray material. Uh, and the other, you don't have any idea? That I can't tell from okay. the back. Will for <laughs> Will yeah, that's, that's the name I was trying to think before. Will for Joe, that. the guy I called Joe. In Joe Will for kind of looks like Joe Will for from the back, but I am not sure. All right now, the you have spray in one part of that sprayer, and the, then when the water and it mixes. The truck on the left is pumping water into the sprayer, and the guy up on the sprayer, who I think is Joe Will for, but I'm not sure is dump opening bags of spray material and dumping them oh, in. And here are some of the lower right hand And, and going the lower the right, it looks like some of the bags. You see, the truck driver might pick the, will pick those up, take them back to the tank, and throw them in a, mm -hmm. in a, in a trash container. You keep your facilities very, very well picked up, don't you, Don? That's that very important. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I do. I try to. I think oh. it's very important, yeah. And, uh, and we do the best we can, you know, to yeah. keep it up. Uh, nobody likes to work in a... In a in a in a crummy uh, atmosphere and dirt and debris yes. all over and so I try it. Anyway. Your dad taught you that too. Yeah, that's all, right. all part of the way you're brought up, I guess. All right. This we got anything else old like this? Well, that's that's about the oldest right there. If you Here. Can pull it. That's when they planted the orchard back in the in the late twenties. And uh, see, he's focusing in on it if he can get it. That's just three steel wheel tractors working in tandem, plowing and working the field. Okay. And that is before my time. I was that born in '28. You may remember it. Early '28. Oh, Some of us was oh, from now on. It's Mr. Ben for you, not <laughs> ben, and Don for me. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you actually plant the trees, they're planted by hand. Uh, not anymore. They used they to be. They were then. Oh yeah. They used to, at that time, they dug the holes by hand. Actually, what they did, I understand, is they had two pails. They dug the topsoil out, put it in one pail, dug the hole out with the subsoil, put the tree in the ground, and then dumped the number one pail in. The topsoil went down in around the roots. Uh, now it's done with a tree planter and uh, very quick and just two people, you know. When you put that topsoil back, it's right back in its own area you don't put it in something you don't bring top soil no, no, in. it's, no, it, it, no. it's we, right we, in its own area off the top was yep. they, they understand they put it down the bottom of the hole a better atmosphere for right. the roots to grow how big of a is your at that time where a tree when you planted them any idea oh they're they're same as they are today they're uh, one year seedlings and they're anywhere from three to five feet in length oh they are that, roots well, and they all. Are that big yeah you got to realize about two feet go on the ground so there's about three feet above the ground 
So you have to dig a hole down for about two twenty-four feet? inches. You do eighteen to twenty-four inches. But now the tree planter just slices it like a uh, a plow, like a plow where they're burying uh, tile and doing drainage. Uh -huh. Just opens it up, and the man rides on there and just keeps dropping them in at, uh, as he's told to do. Okay. We got a guy. Jeff usually takes care of all that. It's it's a little different job. He he lines up things across the field, and every five rows he's got a stake. And he raises his hand, and when the man should put the thing in, he drops his hand. Right. Just keeps dropping his hand, and you'd be surprised how accurate that is. If you've seen these knives here, this, there's two. That doesn't mean there's one for me and one for Don. It's holding our pictures up, although he would like to stop and go over to the cafe to get a, a coffee or a break, here, but we're going to hold off a little while. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching, Hometown Cable. Don Green, on your left. I'm Bob Venn, Calvin Castine with the camera. Okay. You knew that. Yes, I knew that. When we were here uh, four years ago and we saw the facilities and we saw the trees and now we've seen the trees early and we've seen the pickers, uh, in this particular picture, we're going to be talking for the next few minutes about people. And here are two people that are probably still in the area. Are they Shazy people? Oh, they sure are. All right. Uh, on the left? The girl on the left is Carolyn Defiant. And the girl on the right is Viola Hazen. They are sisters. And my mind slips me completely. I may think of their maiden names. First float we had, I came back to Shazy Orchards. We put up a float, and the girls went on it, and they gave away apples. Uh, and Carolyn is still here, and she's out in the field probably now. Uh, she's part of our harvest crew and a supervisor. Mm -hmm. Viola Hazen... Uh, uh, they had a restaurant. They ran the one down uh, at our facility for years, right across the road from Orchard View Cafe. And uh, then she's must be semi-retired. I see her down at the uh, Weathercock and uh, cooking and waiting on table off and on. Mm -hmm. All right. On this picture, start from the right with the the uh, the the senior green. You don't. You, you mean the police line up as yeah. Calvin just referred to it? Is that <laughs> yeah. what you mean? Yes, yes. We we'll start from the right. Is is my dad, Don Green, senior, and he's since deceased. And that uh, young looking fellow that could probably climb up the side of the wall at that time was myself, Don Green, Jr. The next fellow immediately on my right is Albert Laramie and both Albert and my dad are gone they're almost originals to me here and on Albert's right the next guy is Melvin Laramie now his brother Jim came to work and is still here but Melvin was apparently working the summer when we built that storage and he is up at uh, Aris Laboratories in a management position of some type but that was taken when we built the Addition on the north end, our 1957 storage. Chief engineer or something, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Something he was engineering and uh, is he? still there, Chief yeah. Engineer there. Open, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, one, he and I have one thing in common. We both like a cigar once in a while. <laughs> and you both like to be with your dad, I see. We apparently for, were. For guidance. Probably, probably <laughs> at that time, neither one of us had a lot of choice if we wanted to work. <laughs> Don, what's this round unit up on the right-hand side? Uh, that's part of the refrigeration equipment, Bob. Okay. That's what's called an accumulator. Right. And without getting into it, uh, some of the ammonia, the ammonia goes in as a liquid and it's supposed to uh, turn into a vapor as it absorbs heat. Absorbs, uh, heat. If it doesn't, there's got to be a place for the liquid to accumulate uh, for uh, varied reasons. And that's about as far as I can go with that. Any idea what year that might be? That's 1957, I sure do. That's when we built that building and it's the first year I came back here from uh, working with Food Machinery Corporation to work. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's when you uh, got back from college and you said you went south. Well, you know, I, no, I went to college and I went in the Air Force for yeah. four years and then I came back and I went west. I went to Lansing, Michigan to work with Food Machinery Corporation. All right. And, and worked your... there three, four years and then came back here. Who took the picture? They're all looking at him and all smiling for the person anyway. I have, don't know. My son Jeff takes a lot of those, but that wasn't him. He's only three or four years old. Calvin's been showing on Hometown Cable some of our classic what's going on here. And this certainly would be considered to be a classic oh, picture. Oh, it certainly would. This is Albert Laramie. Albert did a little of everything as everyone did. And they came here, but Albert was here when they planted Shazy Orchards. His son is here now, and 
I learned a lot from Albert. Uh, he was a wizard at mechanics, self-taught guy, uh, been around here a long time that everybody knows, and his son Jim has inherited that. Uh, he can do about anything they want to put their hand to. And not afraid uh, to get the hands dirty. And not afraid to get the hands dirty. And uh, as I say, we all learned a lot from Albert down there. We're going, of course, Jim and I worked for our fathers, and it wasn't <laughs> always easy, but we survived it. I wanted to show that one because Absolutely. Albert is a real uh, part of the history here. Okay. There's not going to be a test at any of these pictures we're showing you now, but again, history of the orchid with this man right here. Well, I wanted to show... You know, a lot of the people that their families are still around here. This is Reginald Dupree. Uh, Gerard Dupree is still uh, works down at uh, Riley Ford. Uh, uh, one of the brothers graduated with my wife, was up to, uh, can't think of names, we call him Red, I guess, Red. maybe not, uh, up at uh, Minor Farm. Uh, there were some others, I tell you. Well, my Red wife, is the one around this point that got the antique store. Well, I'm not sure about that. The one, the one I called Red uh, was working up there. I don't know wh whether that's part of it or not, and I okay. can't think. Of it. They had, they had, I think they had a couple, sis two, two couple girls and three, four boys or something. Yeah. You still that's have... Reginald Dupree. He was a foreman here yeah. when I was a uh, wee one. Yeah, his wife was a very good friend of Neva Dwight. She'd Could be. be. Over, she'd be over there quite often. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. I'll that to you, but just another picture. Okay. If you want any of those, uh, yeah, here's another. Uh, picture. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you get this whole one in, Calvin? In okay, you got a big person there on the left, and then the other people are further away. Uh, well, why don't you show Don Green? Yeah, got him. You got them all. They, they sure look inspired. Yeah, 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 he's. You're giving him a, a lecture here, and you got these people. So interested. Who are these? What well, are you I got my you? mouth open, and the group <laughs> I can only tell from the next one I show you, which will make Jeff happy, is uh, when Jeff was in college at Canton, they uh, came over here for a tour of the orchard and our farm business, and that was a group of students from Canton, and uh, I, I, I think they were more interested than they appear right then, you know? Well, their it, photographer took that. Okay, now, you got a stick in your hand, I can see way down now. Either that's you were... A, that's a pointer, Bob. A pointer, or, a you were, or they would figure you were going to use it. I'm not sure no, where. No, no, that's no. That's a no, pointer. I, that's a pointer, and there's a map behind me, and I was kind of showing them where they were. Okay, and this is outside of the cold storage where you have your... Right in the front there, near the office, okay. what we call our front packing house. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay, just a quickie on this one. Uh, I know it'll make Jeff's day. That was when he was a student at Canton, same day as the tour over here, and he came with the uh, group that was touring the orchard. And uh, uh, I thought that he might like to see how he looked back in those days. Very exciting day for him yeah, at the he, orchard. He, he looks excited too, <laughs> doesn't he? It's a day off, I think. Well, you know, we talked with him earlier in this show, and uh, he's certainly very interested now and uh, is very, kept very busy too. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's got the same problem with his dad as Don had with his dad. You, you've got to put in those full hours and keep busy. Yeah, yeah, Train you need right. to. I think anybody in the farming business has to do it to stay in it today. Yeah. I don't know whether that's got nothing to do with Well, orchard, I think it uh, does. It's got a little bit about the people that your dad uh, yeah. went with. Uh, maybe Calvin can freeze this picture, then we'll look at it and kind of point out the people. Go ahead. Okay, well, uh, down the, sitting down in the front on the left is my dad. Beside him is Bob Feinberg, assemblyman at the time, and I might say I have no idea what this uh, picture was about, but they're all local people. On the left is Marcy Mulberry, his son Al Mulberry is now running Northern Orchards. In the middle was Norm yeah, Foote. Northern Ab uh, Orchard is where? In Peru, New York. In Peru, New York. Bob, all right. Everybody knows where Oh, they may not. Is. No, I may oh, not. Geez, no. you usually have a rather we, narrow you, world, don't you? You've got to really put the, we're not all apple people. Right in the middle, the tall guy is Norm Foote. He was a realtor in the area. And on the far right standing is, give me the first name, Beeman. Raymond. Raymond Beeman, Rob, Roswell Beeman's father, and I think it could be Farm Bureau or something. I think they were all involved. Yeah. I'm not sure. He lived on Stetson Road, just yep. up the road from me for many years, and uh, his daughter, Alice, and my sister, Ramona, were the very best of friends. They were in each other's wedding parties, as I recall, and uh, uh, he was a good farmer. And his yep. son still operates, and of course, Mrs. Beeman worked for the bank 
Uh, that's Roswell's wife. Work, still works for the bank, yes, I believe. Okay. I guess that's and, true. Uh, and, it's, and of course, Mr. Feinberg, uh, we think of Flossberg, but remember, he's from Altona originally. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, his father was a... He still comes to Rotary off and on. He's an honorary member of our club, and mm -hmm. he shows up uh, every couple weeks or so. And still active and uh, got a keen wit and uh, uh, very sharp. Very active person in the area. Meeting in go. Albany, FB meeting in Albany. Farm Bureau PX meeting in Albany. There yeah. it is, right on the back. Yeah. And Mr. Green was very active in this, and he was on other oh. committees, too, wasn't oh, he? Oh, he? he was very active in Farm Bureau and uh, and enjoyed it, and he was president of the New York State Farm Bureau at one time. Mm -hmm. and uh, Was he on any bank boards? I thought he was on yeah, a bank the, board. Yeah, it's now the key bank. It was a... Yeah. Nation National, commercial. National, Bank National Commercial National Bank Commercial Bank, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 And uh, you know when you when you saw the Shazy and today still you think of the Greens because uh, and now you got the fourth generation coming down now. Oh boy, I you, hope so. Your, your grands well I just saw somebody there. Well they're there, you know. You don't know whether they're gonna want to follow or not, but you do all you can to encourage them. Okay. We'll be right back. We're looking at some more pictures. Looking at a Polaroid picture, and uh, now are they picking from the boxes in, at this time? Yeah, that's just you know another one that came across as kind of historical. Uh, first, I'll explain the the gal packing is uh, uh, Alita Ebert. Uh That was uh, Larry Paquette's sister. Uh huh. And yeah, we went from boxes to bins. Uh, you can see, if you look at the right, the top, the side of the bin is split. There's a door that comes out. The uh, bin would set down low, as you see it on that stand underneath it, and pack, uh, pick off the top of the bin. It rotated. Then it got down below the door. The girls would pull the doors out, and that bin would raise up about two feet. And then they'd pick out the bottom of the bin and pack it. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the grader you saw today, these girls had to make all of the decisions, size, grade, quality, all at once there. So these weren't washed before you start these? No, no, they weren't, they weren't washed. Today they wash them and today they're they all washed flowed and, out. Yeah, and some are stuff. even waxed, but that's becoming less popular. People are being very concerned about what's mm -hmm. added to their fruit, you know. Just one more little thing about a, uh, an employee and, uh, again, history. That's history. That's right. I thought so. The others can't be identified. Too I far can't back. see far back in there, but uh, you I just saw Alita's one and thought yeah. maybe we might want yeah. to mention it. Uh, you know, it, it, maybe some people could see it, but we're talking with Don Green, and he can't quite see in that in that direction, in that distance. I, I can't even sit this long. I, <laughs> I probably will get up when you take the next break. Okay, here. that's back with people. Yeah. That one with people. We'll yep. take a short break. We're going to show you some very old pictures now. Don, this is an overall view of what, uh, Don? That's what's now Orchard View Cafe. That's the original Shazy Orchard's Wayside Market. Uh, when they first planted the orchard, there was no apple production, as I understand, and, uh, and so they planted in between the orchard rows and in the fields. Right back of my house is uh, about two acres of mucked land, and we had a market, and uh, raised and sold gladiolas, uh, melons. As kids, I remember going into the melon patch and getting a... Uh, a, a melon and uh, and did big business as you can see from the cars this is this is a, a back in the 30s picture and I can remember weekends there going up they gave away free cider and uh, if you got real lucky you got to run the free cider dispenser and if you weren't real lucky you lugged boxes of apples out to people's cars and you made your cider right here also. Oh yeah, made right here at Shazy Orchards up until about seven, eight years ago. Look at the number of baskets over on the left side of the picture, you know, right next to the building and out in front. Everything went in baskets those you days. You sold a lot. Sold a lot of apples and uh, other fruits and vegetables they grew here. Gladiolas, flowers was a big business too. Did they get the basket? You give them the basket or did you empty it? Uh, the basket was dumped into a, uh, a bag filler that, if I'm not mistaken, was made and invented by a guy that worked here. He was a carpenter, <coughs> Lionel Joyel, I think his, his name was. And it was a canvas and wood device that you dump the basket in, and funnel it toward a chute, put the bag under the chute outside. Open the door, apples ran into the bag, and you gave it to the customer. Okay. Dad, uh, just for a minute or so, tell us, uh, 
the uh, you've got so many acres here, 1,700 acres. Oh, probably we're down to about 15 or 16 okay. now. And this originally didn't start as the Shady uh, Orchard as far as the individual. This was by the railroad? Uh? Yeah, the orchard was planted by the uh, Delaware and Hudson Railroad. I'm not sure what they carried north, but they were looking for bulk freight to carry back south uh, from Canada. And the idea was to plant an orchard and then move freight cars full of apples south when it came in. And all the individual farms were accumulated and bought by the Delaware and Hudson Railroad. And I mean, mm -hmm. even then, people were getting out of the farming business. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put together this originally 1,700 acres. We, uh, I think, mentioned that and we did the other show, but I just wanted to, you people have seen it for the first time, and just kind of put it in here because it, they did accumulate an awful lot. You want people to really cry, uh, back in the 30s when I was around here, they sold, we had a lot of lakeshore property at that time, and it was 2 to $4 a foot, and <laughs> it was hard to find a taker, you know. Oh, yeah. Today it's 1000 a foot. Yeah, I think is so. Is that what it is? Awfully close? I think so. Awfully close today. Uh... The picture we're looking at now is a close-up of the orchard, uh, what do we call it? Now this is even older because in this one, or, no, or else they took down the, the portion on the side that was open. That's the original. Uh, this the, is the original? The wing was added on the first picture you saw later on. The original was just the, the, uh, the one with the big windows in it and just as you see it here, and actually, my house in the background. I lived over there, and that's changed quite a bit with additions and yes, trees and things. Yep. Did your dad live there at one time? No, no. We lived down at the lake right where Jeff is living now. I was yeah. brought up down there, and Jeff is down there. Was now. that an orchard house at the time? That was an orchard house, and out of view there were two big greenhouses, and that's where they grew their <laughs> plants and everything for the various plantings they made. And those appear to be all apples there, yes. but... Uh, we had bees and sold honey, and you see the flowers up there on yes. the stand. Uh, uh, they sold flowers that they raised here. And that whole field between here and what is now my house in the background used to be filled with gladiolas at one time, and then melons. You'll notice 35 cents a basket. Yep. That includes the apples. It even included the basket, probably. Probably. And now you're talking that less than less than half a cent, maybe a quarter of a cent, an apple. Well, I don't know, those, Bob, what those are. Those are those look like half bushel baskets to me. They're big. Now, you probably very easily could have been more profitable then than it is today, even oh. at those prices that your expenses were. Well, down. that's about the same as the prices are today, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Last two years, it's uh, the price. Uh, the market's gone really south, and uh, uh, you know we really have about 1950 prices here, and we got 1995. Uh, costs and uh, the agricultural business is in a, in a tight bind right now. Yeah, well you could talk to the farmers about that. They certainly know. Uh, another postcard. These were postcards. You could buy them around the county, I'm sure. Just showing the fruits, if you pardon the expression, the fruits of the area. Alright, just a quick picture there. Uh, this shows, uh, again, it's just some people in the foreground. All right, and uh, we'll get another one up here. You see that? Anything there unusual? Just another old picture. Right, to me, look like they're the very early 30s. And uh, you can see. All right, and here's another to show six or seven cars at one time. Did, how many clerks did you have? Did you have four or five people working out there? Do you know? I you were young. You were I young. don't really recall. Oh, I'm sure there were more than that, Bob. Uh, I can remember when I worked there as a kid that if there wasn't uh, 10 or 15 people working there in a weekend, I mean hundreds of cars yeah. were lined up uh, half a mile north and south yeah. and across the road, uh, and hundreds of people came there in a weekend, hundreds. Well, you know, the big pleasure on sound weekends were going for a ride. You That's didn't right. do it during the week so That's much, right. you know, and, and everything else. Uh, when did that close uh, cease? Do you remember any idea? You, you know, uh, as a cafe, uh, not a cafe, but as a. Uh, you you may want to put this one on. You want to put this one on? Yes. Shows the whole facility, both yep. sides, and not when it was busy. But we'll we were freeze this picture front. that we can talk about it. We again, this is a little bit later. I think this is in the 
Not uh, too much later, no? man. Not too much later. Okay. All right. And why why I say that is the facility across the road, you can still see, you see the printing on the roof of the uh, of the farm, the market yes. that it was there, and uh, what is now Orchard View Cafe, across the road from it, and that's why we had a big business going. You see the gas stations, and I used to work that. You got paid a penny a gallon for pumping the gas. We had an ice cream bar on the right, yes, uh, across the road. We're facing it in this picture, screened in porch, and traffic came from all over to buy Shazy Orchard's ice cream, mm -hmm. especially. A lemon sherbet, as I recall, which was the recipe of their own making. So this was about the same time, maybe a little later, because there are a couple cars yep. there, but not much later. Nickel or a dime for a big ice cream cone. Oh, I'm sure. I forgot that, too. Yep. I, probably, I didn't have the nickel or dime, but I think <laughs> my dad bought me a cone once in a while. Well, after you sold five gallons of gas, you'd have a nickel. Oh, that was good money. <coughs> you, uh, listen, of course it was. Uh, hey, listen, we sold probably 2,000 gallons of gas on a weekend there. You, you know? could make 20 bucks, you know, and... That was not bad. When I think back about that, I didn't realize you sold it for a penny a, a gallon because people way back no, no, when no. I was I there, got a penny a that's gallon. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah. But way back, people said that uh, well, Don, sit. they thought that Don Green had a lot of sense. But I was thinking it on a different basis, Don, when I heard And so that. were most of us. <laughs> What's the big building on the six, left? It was six for a dollar, though. Six for a dollar. Yeah, six what, gallons what for a dollar. What was the big building on That the white building is still there. You probably have it in other pictures. That's an equipment shed. That was almost an original here, but not quite. Mm -hmm. That was probably, <clears throat> since I can remember, that had to be in the in the mid-30s, 30, late 30s uh, constructed, you know? Right. Now... In the foreground, right in the middle of the picture, you see the building running from us away toward the road. Yep. That was the, the place where they sold the apples or where the cafe is today. That's right. The one off to the left was the open in the front, yep. and, it, and it joins it. Yep. What was right behind? Do you remember? That was an ice house right there, and uh, originally, and that is a little later probably, Bob. You may be a little more correct, but not too much later. That was an ice house, uh, and... Uh, uh, one of the tenants there, remodeled, when I was a kid, remodeled it, 